Hey, everybody. Do we have a point goal? Yes, we do. As many points as you can get. Happy Friday, Sarah. So good to see everyone here. We got Lydia, Natasha, Haley. Good to see you here, Haley. Start getting those points. You know what? Some people may have missed the points at the start. If you're here early, there's more points. Remember, arrive early. Let's add some points to the people. 20 points to everybody right there. Adriana, groovy music, Hannah says. Yes, this is Kahoot disco music. We'll be starting the Kahoot here in about three minutes. <laughs> but I finished my coffee. I finished my coffee. <laughs> I need to get, I've got these really good ginger drinks. Really excellent. I'm doing great. Oh, Lucy's asking Roderick. I thought I was asking me. <laughs> Macy's here. Good to see everyone. You're welcome, Miranda, for the extra points. I'm wearing my Haslam attire today. Has some College of Business. Thank you very much to both my department and the Haslam College of Business for making this all possible. Let's see. Everyone is doing well. Tag someone in the chat. Say hey to someone in the chat. We start with some positivity. What is Mubot going to say today? What is a Mubot quote for today? Mubot, what do you have to say for yourself? He says Brian is sus. Mubot. Mubot is sus. Hey, Haley. Good to see you. Bailey, good to see you too. I am doing well. Good to see you, Ori. So we'll start here in just a moment. Did you? I wonder what was recommended. Can you see what was recommended? You're excited for the Kahoot. Yeah. How many people do we have watching right now? I can see it over here. Mary, we get 10 points for everyone watching, and I'll round up. We're at we're at 500 points. 500 points. If everyone plays, it'll be 500 points. Last week, it was 1,000. Remember, show up. More people show up, more points there is. And then there's free points, too. There's always free points for showing up. So if you're like, I didn't get any points. Yes, you're getting points by watching, and you're getting points by playing. And you also are learning the Canvas content quizzes. So come back to these videos here for the Canvas content quiz. Let's put three minutes on the clock. Do I have a three minute timer? I don't have a three minute timer. Let's do it. We'll do it with two timers. <laughs> two timers here. We got a two minute timer going. And let's bring this down right here. Here's the Kahoot code. Happy Friday Disco. You love the points. Let's do another 10 points to the viewers right there since people like points so much. Add viewers. This is code. We're gonna do another 10 points. Maybe Evil Mubot will come in and take away the points. You're welcome, Katie. He says, so many Mubots given out. I need to correct that typo. <laughs> the typo, I meant to say Mubots. I mean, Mubot meant to say that. He, he's doing that. You're welcome, Lucy. Let's see if we get everyone playing here. We have like 48 people watching. At least that's what Streamlabs shows me. Let's get everyone in the game with 49 people playing. I believe the drink was friend from Coco. What? What is this? What is this drink? It's from Coca-Cola? I'll round up to the nearest 10. So when you see it at like 49, you'll be like, oh, we got to get 51. We got to do it. 30 people playing. I'll round up to 400 points. We're at 400 points. We're going to start here in about three minutes. So your phone's not on Kahoot the whole time. Remember, it's called Beverly. I'll check that out. Remember, the more you watch, we're at 500 points. It's very popular in Italy. I want to go to Italy, France, all those places. I should, I should clip the moment when I was talking to about Dr. Uh, Vitos Kazmala. I talked about him in 320. Beverly is this guy. <laughs> oh no, we've hit a controversial topic. Whether or not Beverly is a good drink. I think I've heard of it before this. Like part of my brain's like, I've heard of that. Let's see if we can hit 51. Let me look at the timer and see how we're doing. We're gonna start here in one minute, 10 seconds. You can hear the timer go off. Sarah remembers her from the Coke Museum. Aurier says, bad, very bad. Points, points, points. You probably heard the timer go off. One more minute on the clock till the Kahoot starts. If you're a part of 320, you can play this Kahoot. We are doing another Kahoot after this. If you're a 201, you can play the 320 Kahoot. We're at 600 points. We just pressed the 600 barrier. 600 barrier. 500 points. <laughs> Someone's grabbing a second device. <laughs> what happened? What happened? It's sad now. Oh, wrong button. What happened to our points? We 
need one more person. Can we do it in time? Can we do it in time for 600 points? Can we do it? Turn the music back on here. Can we do it? What is happening? Oh, there we go. We are starting in just moments. I would have given you the points anyways. You know what? I'll make you a deal. Every time we hit 50, if we do it next week, I'm making it a thousand points. Let's just go crazy right here. Thousand points on the week. Thousand points on the line. Just like last week. Thousand points first. 500 points second. 250 for third. Make sure to email me and first place gets the $20 Amazon gift card. Let's do this. European Brian is something I'd like to see. <laughs> His hair would be even longer. His hair is like down to here. I don't know what's going to happen to my hair. Let's find out. Let's find out on this week's Kahoot. We won't find the answer to that. Let's do this. Here we go. We are covering Canvas content questions. All data needs what to make sense? All data needs quantitative? All data needs statistics? All data needs parameters? All data needs content. What move that starts to that sounds pretty good right there. Because we need to know what we're making sense. I'll drop hints as you as we do these. So if you're stuck, listen in. All data needs to make sense. All data needs a frame of reference. All data needs context. All data needs context. So when we talk about what context means, if I say two, is two good or bad? Two Fs. Oh gosh, that's really bad. Two Ferraris, you just won. Whoa, that's awesome. So data is just numbers, values, but when we give them context, they start to make sense to us. There's 10 questions and make sure that these are on these, a lot of these, actually I think all of them completely relate to the Canvas content quizzes. So come back to the, come back to the videos if you're doing the Canvas content quiz and you've got tons of huge hints right here. So you should know this really quick. If you use flashcards, I'd put all data needs context. It's just a quick saying that we need to know. Like it needs, we need to know what we're talking about. Makes sense. Let's see who's in the lead right here. We're gonna slow it down. Ask those questions when you got it. So ask your questions. Great job, chat. Zany cat. You know what I like that? I've never seen a zany cat in here, but I'm going with epic dog. I mean, who would not want an epic dog? We got zany cat versus epic dog. Battle of the century. Cats versus dogs. Living together. I don't know the quote. <laughs> Question number two, which of the following is not a variable type? Now there's three types of variables. The three types of variables are, I don't even know what they are. You gotta help me out here. People in the chat can say it. What are the three types of variables? There's three types of variables. The three types of variables are categorical, puts things into groups. That'll help out for later. Categorical puts things into groups. Quantitative, is actual real numbers and identifiers. Nice job right there, Alexander. Quantitative categorical identifiers. So columns are not one of the three types of variables that we talk about. Now, categorical, I mean, excuse me, identifiers are special case what? I drop a lot of hints here, things we should know. Identifiers, this one all the way over. Oh, I can, I got other Brian. Where's other Brian at? I never, there's so many little changes I gotta do. There's tiny Brian. And other Brian, Brawl, and he is over here. Oh, he's too big. Behind my head is it. <laughs> Identifiers are over there. Um, Tiny Brian, go away. Tiny Brian will he'll he'll do the he'll do the announcement ceremony at the end. Tiny Brian will announce the winners at the end of this. So with this right here, you're doing great. I bet you it's all tied up at the top. So remember, quantitative categorical identifier. An identifier is a special case what, and it is something that is unique. It cannot repeat. Identifiers are special case what's. Identifiers are categorical variables that only have one in one observation in each group, like your student ID number, hint, 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 uh, your driver's license number, things that would identify and cannot repeat. They're not quantitative, like student ID number is a number, but it's an identifier because it's not a real number. It's not like how much is your student ID. It's like, which one is your student ID? Like, which one are you of these? Cannot, will not ever repeat. Great job in the chat. How are the dog and cat doing? Zany cat versus epic dog. You can't catch up to zany cat. Dandy pony might, you never know. But zany cat, let's figure out right here who's going to win the Kahoot. Which of the following is highly influenced by outliers? Which of these measures right here, if there's outliers, 
will go in the direction of the outliers, which is not a good thing. That means the outliers are basically controlling them. And we don't want to use these when there are outliers or large skew. So which of these would be highly influenced? You can pick one of the two. And I really like how it randomly put these together today because there's two that are paired together and there's another two that are paired together. And the two that are paired together that are highly influenced by outlier are mean and standard deviation. So I want you to tell me the average salary of this company. There's a person who makes $3 million. There's a person who makes $0 and there's a person who makes $0. What is the average salary of this company? 3 million, zero, zero. So no, Sarah, uh, the code is right behind me. So if you need to rejoin, I'm very sorry, Sarah. 1 million. So if you notice right there, it's the mean is not really represented. What if there's what if there's a hundred people at the company or a hundred yeah, people and one person makes a hundred million dollars and everyone else makes zero dollars? So you've got one person who makes a hundred million dollars. I'll put it in the chat so you can kind of see it visually, and then everyone else makes zero, just all the way. Everyone else makes zero, but one person makes a hundred million dollars. So now the mean would also be a million. Make sure to watch live. Yeah, definitely. The more you do the cahoots, the more you understand the how we do cahoots. Like if you're live, it's easier. It's still a million. What would the median be for that company? The median with 100 people where one person makes $100 million, the median would be what? What would the median be for that company? It'd be zero, which is the 50th percentile of what people make at that company. The median and IQR are based on positions, and the mean and standard deviation are highly influenced by outliers. So when data is unimodal and symmetric, we use the mean and the standard deviation. But when data is more skewed, we're going to use the IQR and the median, and that's when we see uh, outliers and all that good stuff. Very important to know which measures are influenced by uh, outliers. So this is for unimodal symmetric data, and this is for data that is skewed, has outliers, because the outliers and the skew do not impact these measures. How is the cat doing? A mouse is trying to catch up. Social mouse inching its way up with a lion behind it. Kind Panda. I'm rooting for Kind Panda. Kind Panda, if that's you, I'm rooting for you. You got this Kind Panda. Let's make that. Which one? Which one? Let's find out who's going to win here with the true and false. This is a review question. The median is highly influenced by outliers. Please tell me I put the right answer on this one. Please tell me I put the right answer on this one. Please tell me I put the right answer on this one. Social Mouse. Good luck, Social Mouse. The median is highly influenced by outliers. I changed this question today. This is definitely on the Kevin Scott quiz. Please tell me I did not wreck the Kahoot today. <laughs> Please tell me I did not break it. I did. I'm hoping to say not. I did it correctly. I did not break the Kahoot. That is the right answer. I changed this question. Oh no, Sarah! No, the median is not. In, the median is not influenced by it. This is a false statement. What is highly influenced by outliers? Tell me. Tell me a statement. Blank is highly influenced by outliers. Tell me in the chat right now. Blank is highly influenced by outliers. Tell me a true statement. Blank is highly influenced by outliers. Yep, Nudari, you got it. Do it in full sense, like practice. Do it, like people are saying the mean. Mean standard deviation. The mean is highly influenced by Lucy, great job right there. You know what, Lucy? For Lucy right there, we're throwing everyone 10 points in the chat. Let's go to add plus viewers. Thank you so much. Everyone, you just earned another 10 points right there. We throw out points randomly during this. I love the participation. We get hyped for that participation. So with this right here, the mean is highly influenced by outliers. The standard deviation is highly influenced by outliers. The median and the uh, IQR are not highly influenced by outliers. So this is a false statement up there. The median is highly influenced by outliers is a false statement. So don't worry. Stay here, participate. If you're live in the chat, you're getting points. And I also like you typing things out to practice it. If you have to type it out, you'll remember it more than me just saying. You'll be like, wait, didn't I like type out one time that the mean is highly influenced by outliers? Well, then the median would be the one that's not. So the mean and the median are measures of center. Mean is highly influenced by outliers. Median is not. Standard deviation and IQR are measures of what? They're, they're mods, Katie. Join class live and during class I mod people. So the the the... Standard deviation in the IQR are measures of what? The standard deviation in the IQR are measures of what? Standard deviation in IQR are measures of what? That's a review question now. Spread, Alishan, great job right there. Spread. And so the mean and standard deviation go together. Mean, center, standard deviation, spread. Good practice right here, everybody. Good practice. And thank you so much, Corinna, helping out right there, explaining some mod stuff right there, just in case we need to, ooh, zany cat versus social mouse. The epic cat-mouse battle of the century. 
uh, dog, we epic dog. We need you to come back right here. Epic dog. I want you to skyrocket up this leaderboard. We got silver lion right behind <laughs> rational bee versus rational lobster. That's an interesting battle. Cat versus mouse. You know it. Who will win with question number five? What type of variable is student ID number? Dropped a hint earlier. It's also in the question. We don't try to put a trick question on this whenever we put this in. Uh, that basically gives away the answer. <laughs> don't automatically assume that that's the answer, though, because there there's examples with uh, Amazon store identification number where it's a product ID number. And just in some data sets, that could repeat. But at UT, if we were to collect your student ID number, and we had in a data set of students, that would never, ever repeat. And student ID would be, ah, oh, I wanted it to be perfect. I wanted to get perfect score, but that's good enough. I'm really happy. Great job right there. I will throw, if we get a perfect score, I'll throw 20 points. Don't, don't be mad if someone misses if we miss it by one. But everyone focus. Focus in here. We're going to get some perfect scores. Um, trick identities in the background. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, those, yeah, those cool backgrounds. But I think everyone knows that identifiers are things that cannot, will not ever repeat. I'll throw some more points out, Lucy. But you know what? That's mean. I'm just going to give everyone 20 points. Because I don't want anyone to worry if no, if one person misses it. I've learned in my years of teaching, if you're like, if one person misses it. Okay, so a really quick story time with Brian right here. Um, One time when I was doing the TN voice, I said if we had a perfect TN voice, I would like, I'd give everyone like another assignment drop. And they literally started like this hunt for like who has not done it. And they were like, have you done it? I want to see, pull it up and show you've done it. And I was like, okay, everyone calm down. And I've learned to be very careful about saying everyone needs to do something because the very proactive students will try to find the person who did not do it. And I'm like, uh, let's not, uh, maybe I won't put 100% goals anymore. Ooh, still the cat versus mouse battle of the century. TN voice, which <laughs> TN voice, or the, the battle of the century between cat and mouse right here continues with only a 23 point difference. Tom versus Jerry, who will win? The cat versus the mouse. Maybe it'll be the lion. We collect these about a population to make inferences. What do we collect about a population? No one escapes the Inquisition. The Spanish Inquisition. Is that Monty Python? Okay, so if you wanted to understand something, you'd want to understand a population. A population is what you want to understand. The parameters are what you want to understand about the population. Trials is not really applicable to this. So we've kind of given away the answer. In statistics... We try to understand a population, and we do so by taking what? That's not the answer on the screen. Ooh, I highlighted this, and I think people saw what I highlighted. In statistics, we take what's. What do we take in statistics? And remember this right here. Nice job, Katie. Excellent work. Remember SSPP. SSPP stands for Sample Statistics Population Parameters. SSPP. You, take, you get a sample statistic to understand a parameter about a population. So what if you wanted to know, um, oh man, I miss Quidobo on campus. I was reading Reddit and someone mentioned Quidobo and I was like, oh man, Quidobo is my place. And they treat me, they treat me so well. They look at me and they're like, you want a little more sour cream? Like, yeah. Throw on a little more. You want a little more cheese? Yeah. A little more cheese. So, uh, Moe's, Moe's is good. We like some Moe's on campus. What if you wanted to know, uh, what, per Ooh, Ohm right there. Really good thing. What if you want to know what percent of students like, uh, Moe's versus Quidobo better. And you do like a blind taste test. So we're living in a world that we can do this in now. And we do a blind taste test. And people get a little cup of Moe's and they get a little cup of a little cup of <laughs> tub. <laughs> a little cup of Quidobo. And it's like like a one bite thing. Like you try it and then you say whether you like A's or B's more. We're already getting the votes. And you know what? Let's bring up Mubot here. Mubot's gonna help us out. Class is not over, but Mubot's gonna help us out with the Moe's. You know what? I can run the statistics on this. We're literally gonna do some stats right now and i'll show you how easy it is to do with coding so if you're i know roderick's in 320 so um let's do some voting in the chat really quick right here we're gonna do a poll so mo's is zero uh which is better we're not doing the taste test voting this is a sample what i'm doing right now i'm taking a sample of students and quid quidoba i totally misspelled it ignore my misspelling of it quidoba okay so you're going to do vote zero for mo's and vote one for quidoba so like Lucy, there's voting Quidobo. So you're going to do exclamation mark vote. People know how to do it. Look at the people. Who are, so they're voting Moe's right there. Ooh, Moe's is, Moe's is winning out. I think I can, I can show the screen right now. Um, so vote now, especially if you're a Quidobo like me. So if you're a Quidobo, 
vote now forever hold your peace but uh is that the saying i don't know <laughs> so here's the votes right now we're gonna stop the vote here in a moment but this is a sample i'm taking a sample of students to maybe i'm gonna moses better start <sighs> moses is good i mean moses is good but the rice at quadobo <sighs> at least give me quadobo has better rice the queue is silent Udobo? <laughs> i don't know how to say it now <laughs> help me out pronounce it phonetically uh, people will look at me when I say something sometimes. You got to co try some Quadoba. Um, the rice, people are already fight me on the rice right here. The rice is better at Chipotle. To be fair, Quadoba is part of the campus dining ingredients. <laughs> well, Moses Independent. Well, there you go. This, yeah. Uh, doba? Oh, Quadoba. Qdoba. Qdoba. Chipotle. Oh, we could do a, we could do a whole revote on this. We're going to stop the voting right here. It looks like we have enough votes in. Thank you everyone for participating. There was 43 responses. What would 43 be in terms of notation? Who can tell me what 43 would be in terms of notation? So everyone say, oh, there's 43 responses. So if you know your notation from this week, what would 43 be? Class is not over. I'm just pulling up R. What would 43 be in terms of notation? would 43 be in terms of notation it'd be n which is sample size so there we go so what we're going to do is we're going to do one prop or a prop test two one you don't need to know this does everyone see i have x right here and i have n so i can go here and do x was equal to how do we have uh 34 votes so x is how many people wanted uh mo's and 43 is the sample size and guess what there you go the sample proportion is seven. I'll make it bigger so everyone can see. But from our results, what do we have right here? 70, this is the sample. 79% of our sample, which is just 34, if you're wondering how we got this, just 34 divided by 43. And that's how that number is obtained. 79% of our sample likes Moe's better than Quidobo. But look at this. This, for anyone who's taken 201, would know I am 95% confident that the true proportion like for the whole population, because this is what we want to understand, the true proportion of UT students who like Quidoba, who like Moe's better than Quidoba is between 63.5% to 89. Now, what do you think this means for us believing 50% of students like Moe's? We would have evidence that what to 50%? Would we have evidence that more than 50% of students like Moe's or less than, or we don't have evidence either way? Or what do you think we could do? We're not going into too much detail on this. More. Look at the interval right here. I believe the true proportion, because does it make sense that from our sample, we can maybe take an estimate of what the truth is for everybody. So at this point, I just, with our sample, hopefully it's a random sample. What did I say? Random. Hopefully we had a random enough sample. But if we had a true random sample with just this many students, we have good evidence right now that more than 50% of students like Moe's to Quadobo. Does that make sense? This is good evidence, like Daria said right there. This is evidence to show that more than 50% of students like most Quadobo. And we're trying to understand all students. Our sample of 43 students is trying to understand all students. Does everyone understand right here, as we talk through, that statistics, the 79% we, we came up with is a statistic that is trying to understand the truth, which is a parameter for the population. Where did our statistic come from? Nice job, Lucy, right there. Where did our statistic come from? Our statistic came from a what? We took our, we made our statistic from a, a what? We got our statistic from our sample, and we're trying to understand a parameter, which is the truth, like what percent of all students like Moe's to Quadobo, um, and the group we're trying to understand is the population. Hopefully, a bias sample. I agree, HD. We need to redo this. Maybe need need them to send in some samples. Ooh, lion. The lion just ate the mouse and the cat. Let's find out if it continues, if the dominance right here continues. Lion, can lion win? Which of the following displays categorical data? Be quick, be quick, be quick, be quick, be quick. You see one, click it. The lion sleeps tonight. <laughs> Make it happen. Cat and mouse or anyone, dog. Where you at, dog? <laughs> Where you at? Come back. Don't run away. So there's only one on here that does not display categorical data. Can we do it? Apparently with a full stomach. Yeah, I know, right? Can we do it? What is the deal? What's the deal with histograms? 
what is the deal with histograms? Histograms display quantitative data. So what displays, these are all categorical displays of data. I think the only ones we don't have on here are ring charts, frequency tables. So here's three things that display categorical univariate data, uh, but also ring charts, frequency tables. And I think that's it. Please tell me and, and pivot tables and pivot charts too also. Um, but what are things that display quantitative data? What things display quantitative data? Like what are some quantitative data displays? Oh no, where'd the cat go? Cat, dog, cat dog, where are you at? Oh no. Rockstar Goose? Okay, new vote, Rockstar Goose. Uh, bar chart's gonna be, uh, remember, you can make a pie of your favorite bars and a bar of your favorite pies. So bar charts and pie charts go together. Histogram, stem and leaf, dot plots. Is there something else? I feel like I'm missing one. Cat dog was a great show. Good stuff right there. I think a lot of great animators on that. Let's see uh, here, which of the following displays quantitative data? Which of the following displays quantitative data? Chat is helping out. So we had some answers in the chat. Pareto's are categorical. Maybe more on that in a moment. Pareto's, if you're wondering what a Pareto is, more on that in a moment. Hopefully I didn't make an error in the question. For this question, the quicker you answered, the better. That's all right, Hannah, no worries. Let's throw some points here. Hannah, we appreciate you being here. No one answered box plots, but box plots are a correct answer. So we're just gonna add some points in here, Hannah. We appreciate you here playing the whole time. We're just gonna throw another 10 points to the viewers. Um, thank you, Hannah, no worries. Even if you're like, would you rather win a Kahoot or get an A in the class? Would you rather win a Kahoot or get an A in the class? I think I'd rather get the A in the class. You're welcome, Katie. So, and remember, if you're here watching live, uh, you want to get both. <laughs> That's the right answer, right? Sarah just wants to win the Kahoot. Sarah's going to win a Kahoot and just and just leave. She'd be like, I'm done. Won the Kahoot. Bye, everybody. It's, it's like a George Costanza. Oh, no, I'm making dad jokes, aren't I? Seinfeld. <laughs> if, you, if anyone else watched Seinfeld growing up, George Costanza had this thing where he'd go out on a high note. He was in like a meeting and people laughed at his joke. And he's like, That's it. Bye, everybody. <laughs> and everyone's like, What the heck? He just left the meeting. He just like, just left. I shall have the cake and eat it too. Yes, do it. Win the Kahoot and get an A. And I'll tell you this much, the people there, Roderick knows what I'm talking about. So the people who win the Kahoots usually do pretty well. I can't promise you you'll do well, but um, you should take down these notes. Seinfeld is awesome. Check out some Seinfeld. Um, one note, who, who can tell people what to write down from this slide right here, from this, from this Kahoot question? What should you put in your notes? You should put, um, these are all what? I should have put univariate before this. I should have said they're all univariate displays. Like, what is a really good note? Like, while you're watching the Kahoot and use these to help out the Canvas content quizzes, and we have them weekly, that's a good note right there. Correlation does not apply causation. That's a classic thing we say, causation, it's my New York accent. So every once in a while, you'll hear New Yorker and me. Quantitative data. This is all univariate displays of quantitative data. Dot plot histograms and stem leaves are all displays of univariate. Lit lit is it? It's Lydia, right? Please, tell, I'm so sorry, everybody. When I pronounce your name wrong, just correct me. Oh, good, I did. I got it right. Yay! These are these are points for Brian getting a name right. <laughs> You'll rarely get those points. <laughs> the tests of charts that are univariate quantitative displays of data, Lydia. Awesome. Let's see who's in the lead right here. Let's see who's in the lead. We're having so much fun. Probably give out like 100 points during the Kahoot today. Show up to the Kahoots. Get some free points. Is this was this question nine? No, it's eight. Okay, good. We're gonna have a big. This is this is getting crazy, everyone. Mouse versus lion. It was cat versus dog. Mouse versus lion. With only two questions to go, what do we need to know? What best describes quantitative data? Oh no. I died, but I feel like there's a wrong answer. I'm literally gonna get. I feel like I put a wrong answer on this. No, I don't think I did. I just get so afraid. I I make a mistake on like 10% of Kahoot's and I was checking one this one today. <laughs> I scared everybody. Did I Brian misclick? Oh, good, good, good. Actual real numbers we can do math on. Actual real numbers we can do math on. Actual real numbers we can do math on. No, that's the right answer. That is the right answer. I started freaking out so much, but we tricked some people on this. 
that's why I remember this one from last semester. I'm not saying those are good help, but so this is very important right here because numbers, the trick one right here, we got a lot of people, the board's about to go crazy. The board's about to go crazy. Numbers can be categorical. And now you're like, what? It's Lucy. Great job, Lucy. Lucy, I'm just throwing it. Everyone just freaked out right here. Uh, but Lucy, we're throwing other points. I love it when uh, students especially are giving examples that I'm not giving. That means you're following along. Um, and Ella's doing it too. Numbers like student ID are not like numbers we do math on. So zip codes, people have asked like, why isn't a zip code, you know, quantitative? No, zip codes categorical. Student ID is identifier. Zip codes are groups. And so just because it's a number doesn't mean it's quantitative. I started to like really get afraid. I'd put the wrong answer for this one, but um, correct answer accounts for identifiers. Exactly, exactly. Nico, great job right there, Nico. Phone number could be another. Phone number is not a quantity. If you have quantitative data, it's how much is this? Like you wouldn't say how much is your phone number. You'd say, what is your phone number? And phone numbers can be identifiers or categoricals depending, but oh no, Rip Lion. What is the epic battle now between, oh my God. <laughs> Is that the original cat? The cat back? Who are we who are we rooting for here? Who are we rooting for chat? Who are we voting for? The cat is coming back. Who are we rooting for chat? Who are we rooting for? Tell me. It was Zany Cat, wasn't it? Lark. We're going with the Lark. This place Lark right here. Lark versus Lobster. I like that. This is gonna be crazy. Get ready. Be quick. Here we go. What is the following graphic? Be quick. I didn't change the wrong answers. <laughs> Please tell me I clicked. <laughs> That's what happens when you make a change to a question. Should be pretty obvious what it is. New mirror change the wrong answers. Definitely not our studio. Definitely not MATLAB. I did change the. There might be two right answers when I started. And I think I changed it. <laughs> That's not Excel. So this is a Pareto plot. A, a Pareto plot displays what kind of data? A Pareto plot displays what kind of data? What does a Pareto plot, exp what kind of data does a Pareto plot do? Nice job, Alishan. Here we go, Alishan. So for Alishan, fourth place, great job. It displays categorical data. We're gonna add another 10 points to everybody. Um, Alishan, good, good attempt right here. Another 10 points, everybody for, so it displays categorical. A Pareto chart <clears throat> is a special case bar chart that has been what? A Pareto chart is a special case bar chart that has been what? A pre, this is a, when I go over these things, you'd be like a Pareto chart is a special case bar chart that has been the right Y axis looks, I don't know, I don't know. Nah. Um, so put in order, put in order. Put in order. So a special case bar chart that has been put in order. So put in order from small, largest to smallest, exactly. And this is a frequency, and this is a relative frequency, and this is a cumulative percentage right here. This is the cumulative percentage right here going from the amounts as they increase. With that, I promised he would return. Who knows who's returning to do the award ceremony? You got to say it's... Tanner Brown. Okay, everybody. Let's do this. I'm Tanner Brown. I'm Tanner Brown. Who's winning? Third place is Silver Lion. Great job. Hey, Alexander, what's up? Daria. Radiant Lobster. I have no idea who's going to win. And the winner is... Helpful Camel. Helping out. I'm Tanner Brown. This has been the Statue One Canute. Cahoot. Thank you to Social Mouse and whoever fifth place was. Great job. I gotta go away. My voice is very happy. Okay, I'm I'm back now. So congrats, helpful camel. Amazing work. We're gonna play the 320 Kahoot in about two, three minutes. Oh, helpful camel, great job. Oh, you got it. Ella, make sure to email me. Um, email me. Um, you know what I can probably let me do this right now. Okay. I'm gonna put the class in. Don't leave yet. If you won points, don't leave yet. I've I'm gonna add people's points in. So give me just a second. Ella, you were a helpful camel. Ella, get ready to check your points. Ella, you're getting the thousand points. Ella, your points have been changed. Who else? Who is second place? Is second place in the chat right now? I can fix your points immediately. 
Ella, you just got another thousand points. You got second? Awesome. It's a little bit of the, like, awesome, nice job. During class, uh, say, hey, Brian, I want to be a mod. And I'll make sure to do it. And is who was third place? Who was third place? Who was third place? Should we give fourth place 100? If you're, you were third, Aaron, let me go ahead, Aaron, here. Let's put on, uh, I'm going to put on a little music here while we do this. There we go. It's too sad. There we go. Better music. Give fourth. Yes, let's go to fourth. So Aaron is third. So who is fourth? I'm going to give some points out. Aaron, your points are now added on. Who is fourth? Are they in the chat still? You're fourth, Alshon. Alshon, you get 100 points right here. Thank you very much. Is fifth place in the chat? Is fifth place in the chat? John Denver vibes. Your my name is fourth? Wait, wait. Nico, were you... What do you mean your name? No, I'm confused. Were you fourth place? We tied? Explain in greater detail and I'll... You were seventh. Let's get, you know what? For Haley, for everybody, we're going to give another uh, five points to the viewers. Probably give out like 100 points. 80 points for 30. There's some extra points if you stayed around, hung around for the award ceremony here. Let me see. I think we've given out points to all the prizes. You're welcome, Katie. Thank you, everybody. Kind of the points go down each time. We're going to start up. Hey, let me hop to space. Let me leave this screen. Some chill music right here. So hang out if you're 320. Uh, we will do uh, points and we will remember email me if you're first for the Amazon gift card Let me hop over to the main screen. Let me bring off classes over. We're good to go and let's go back to the main screen Let's go 320 Lucy says Let's put up Marvel and let's get going with the 320 Kahoot here in just a moment How is everyone doing what what 320? Get ready for some coding. Now, here's the thing for 320. Um, I put some challenging questions in here. And the name of it's 32474 because you both do coding. Uh, the first question, I think, is a very challenging question with one minute on the timer. I'm going to give some hints for these. So there will be hints for these. 201, you can hang out. There's some knowledge that hopefully will impart on you. You're about to hear two things in the background. Just volume. Bring it down. Okay. We're going to start here with some 320. Can I attempt? Oh, yes, of course. Of course, Sarah. You are more than welcome. 320 can play your cahoots. 201 can play the 320 cahoots. And I'll try to try to make some 201 relevant information. With that, it's time, everyone. Let's let's pump up the jam. Ah, we got to go to disco. Disco cahoot music is the best music. Everyone knows that. We got Daring Llama to start the game. Purple Marakeet. Meerkat. Marakeet. <laughs> I'll tell you, I can't read. I really don't know how. It's, it's, it's kind of true. I'm really bad at it. I've read things and my fiance has been like, what does that say? And I'll read it again. She'll be like, read it again. And I'll be like, oh, it doesn't even say that. And she'll be like, yeah, I, I have no idea what you're reading. I'll round up these points pretty nice. 320 has less students in it. Let's do 20 points for 320 because there's less people. So right now we're at, um, I round up, so we're at 400 points. We're at 400 points. 400 points for the 320 Kahoot so far. So if you're 201, hang out. And hey, you could win. These are smaller Kahoots. You could win 20 bucks. You could win some points. So hang out. When you read in between the lines a bit too much, exactly. <laughs> we're going to put well, one minute on the clock. One minute. Let's go here to the timers. One minute on the clock. People joining in. One minute on the clock. You're welcome, Lucy. Hang out with 320 just for some points. Do it. People are gonna people are gonna go to Wall Street bets. No, don't do that. <laughs> and they're gonna be like, join our Kahoot. We need a million points. If we get like a thousand people playing, one person will win and win all their points for the semester. So we got one minute on the clock. I'll get 500 points so far. 500 points. 500 points. Someone's going to win 500. 
got on we got a few seconds on the clock right here we got 25 seconds be joining in 20 seconds on the clock oh, oh, oh. nico good to have you here natasha lucy can we get some i'm ready's in the chat because in 10 seconds we'll be kahooting again get some i'm ready's i'm ready i'm ready I wonder if a nickelodeon will hit me with a copyright if i ever put that on the soundboard some i'm ready's I can't hear that. I need to up the volume on that. Note to self. Up. Ooh. I'll do it after. Can I? I'm going to try something real quick right here. Let me two seconds. We're going to start here in 20 seconds. Let me see if I can fix something. This is a live Brian trying to fix something because he'll forget if he doesn't. Sound effect. Owen Wilson. Volume. Headphone warning, I don't know how loud this is. I usually do these tests not live. Owen Wilson, what do you think of that? It still needs to be louder. We'll work on that, Owen Wilson. Let's start up the Kahoot. Starting in three, two, one. Let's Kahoot. Wow. <laughs> Solve the following code. I'm gonna give you some hints though. So what you have here is a logical vector. The C up here turns this into a vector. So this is a vector with three elements in it. We should know that, three arguments rather, that are being joined together. Now, what does which do? That's the big question. This is something we'll be learning next week. Which returns the positions of the trues? So when you put something inside of a which, the return you get is where are the trues? Read this like, which ones are the trues? And that should tell you the answer to this code. So you have a vector right here of three elements. Which ones are the trues? That's what which does. If you memorize which ones are true, you can remember which returns the positions of the trues. And I'm dropping this note in the chat right here. <laughs> and it says, wow, wow. Which returns the positions of the trues? So which returns the positions of the shrews? So hopefully, let's see how everyone does with that huge hint. I've got hints. If you see hints, slow down. I'm gonna give hints. Does that make sense? Who's with me on this? Who could decode what the following would do? Let's bring up back R right here. What if I put a vector right here? I'm gonna call this vector. And I make this vector. What will this vector return if I say which on this vector? Who knows what this vector will return? If there was an, ooh, 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 good HD. No, we're throwing, we're throwing another 10 points. I really like that. Nice job, Nico. Excellent work, Nico. Add viewers. I should just keep this in my copy paste. Let's add some 10 points. Great job, great questions. Uh, you already know what this is returning. It returns positions of the true. What's gonna change now when I run this? really great and it tracks exactly that's a vector one through four and so what will what will this do now what will this return what will this return i put an exclamation mark before the f what will that do to the false right there one through five. Ooh, wait what, what is that not that's so interesting i'm gonna tell dr petrie this like Dr. Petrie. Oh, no, 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 no. <sighs> User error. Can anyone explain why Brian was confused? User error. I was like, that does not make sense. When code doesn't run the way you expect it to do, it's probably user error. So Brian had an error. Let's bring up MuBot here. <laughs> Two seconds. <laughs> here, I'll, I'll bring up MuBot's error screen in a moment here. What did it, what did Brian do? Because he thought it would return one through five and it does return one through five, but what did I not do? Let me, let me bring up because I feel want my errors. So while we go through this, I need errors on, sorry, I forget to turn on errors because we don't always use the errors. Uh, errors are now going. You can now add to my errors. So if you're wondering what I forgot to do was I forgot to resave the vector. I forgot to resave the vector. So what I did was, is I ran this code and then checked it. And then I altered this code and I ran this again. I didn't overwrite the vector. Does that make sense? I didn't save the vector again. So if you alter the code up here, you need to resave the vector because it was still working off of this vector, even if I 
go here and add more elements, then I have to rewrite the vector. And you notice where the true is right there. So let's hop back to the Kahoot. Good stuff right there. That's just the error screen. So let's continue on. By save, do you mean control enter? Lucy, great job right there. You're right. Control enter to, it's going to run the code which saves it. Does that make sense, Lucy? It's going to run the code that then saves it into the vector again. So that is great job. Nice job, Lucy. Great questions. Green koala versus fuzzy newt. That's quick lemur. I like lemurs. Let's see what happens here with the lemur. I miss my lemurs. They didn't have real lemurs. So now we have logicals in a sum. What is the sum of logicals? What is the sum of logicals? But newts are slimy. They are, aren't they? <laughs> what is the sum of logicals? How does R see trues and falses? How does R see trues and falses in the background? How does R see trues and falses? It sees them as ones and zeros. So the sum of this vector will be, right job right there, Lucy, nice job, it'll be two. Who can tell me what the sum, wrong button, who can tell me what the sum of this logical vector is? We're gonna make our life easier. Who can tell me what the sum of that logical vector is up there? Who can tell me what the sum, because this is the very next topic we're going to be covering. Who can tell me, if you're winning, Sarah, that'd be awesome. It's going to be five, right? Because there's five trues. Does everyone see that? There's five trues right here. So when it sums this up, sum can tell you how many trues. You know what you can also do? What do you notice that mean is doing? Can anyone explain in words what mean is doing? It might be easier if we had another. Can anyone explain it? Oh, there's nine observations now in here. Now there's 10. So there's 10 observations in this logical vector. And what is mean doing? We can find out how many trues there are, or we can find out what. It'll, it'll average, it'll tell you the percent of true values. So you can take the mean of a logical vector and it'll tell you the percent of trues. Does that make sense? If you have here like, uh, let's go vector again, and you go true, true, false, 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 what will the mean of this logical vector be? So the mean of this logical vector will be what? Exactly. It, Lucy, great job because it treats it like ones and zeros. And exactly, Alshon, there you go. Is anyone here not 320? You're like, oh, I get it. It just tells you the percent of trues when you take the mean of a logical vector. So hopefully that makes sense. There's 40% trues right there. If you do some of that vector, it'll tell you how many trues there are. Now, what will the witch do? These are really small, good commands to know. And exactly, Lucy, it'll do two divided by five. What will the witch return for this vector? This current vector I have up there, what will witch return for it? The positions of the trues. So here we are with the percent of trues, and trues is capitalized. The sum of, or how many trues? You got Maris working on a logical vector, and we have here positions of the trues. Is this all making sense right here? Hopefully, if you're in 320, it's like, okay, so it makes sense. Nice job, Mubot, helping out Mubot. Who is in the lead? Fuzzy, see, we talked about, about Fuzzy Newt. We're sorry, Fuzzy Newt, but Purple Mer Meerkat, I was with you from the start. Don't forget, I, I was voting for you the whole way. Purple Meerkat, good luck. Here we go. How many arguments does sequence 4, 10, 2 have? How many arguments does it have? So sequence is a function. Sequence is a function. The first argument is from, to, by. So if you've already figured this out, what would this return? That's not the question. But what would this return? So it's a sequence from four to 10 by two. So what would be the return if we run this code? If you run this code, what will you get? What will you return if you get this code? Exactly, HGT. Nice job. And there are three arguments. How do you know something is an argument in R? When do you know something is an argument? Like it's inside of a function and then each argument is separated by a what? Each argument is separated. Nice job, Lucy. It's inside the parentheses, that means it's arguments inside of a function, and then commas separate each argument. Arguments are basically instructions, like you can see if we go more in depth on this, that this would have from four to 10 by two. So you could say uh, to a thousand, and there you go. You can just change what the argument is, and it changes the instructions of what it does. So the arguments are just instructions for the sequence. The function is a sequence, and then the arguments tell it how to do that function. So I always think about things like make dinner, and then you could have an argument like what, and then you could have another argument time. And so, or like at this time, 
at this time. There we go. So you could have an, like, if you're talking about making dinner, I want some pizza tonight. I know, we made a really good uh, vegetables with rice and peanut sauce just because we're not going out. Why am I doing better in a class? <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Alexander and Sarah, great job. Keep listening in. There's hints if you if you just go slowly. But is this making sense how coding works that the function make dinner will take two arguments? You will need to, yeah, it's because it's conceptual. If you learn, and this will help with coding. Does it make sense like you're going to tell it what you want for dinner? So we'd probably put something like pizza and then we could put at time and then you could put in here 5 p.m. And you know what you could do? Let's turn this into a real function real quick. I'm going to turn this into a real function called make dinner. And then it's going to take two arguments, what, and it's going to take at this time. And then all it's going to do is say cat paste. And then it's going to say uh, what, and then it says, we'll be ready at, and then we say at this time. Good. And let's do it. Let's run our function, make dinner. What are we making for dinner, everyone? Make dinner. So what are we making for dinner? What are we making? So there's our function we made. So that's, I just made a user function right here that takes two arguments. And what are we making? We're making tacos. Oh, okay, that reminds me we're getting tacos. I got to tell Chelsea. And then what, what time are we making it? What time are we making? What at this time? What time? <laughs> it's supposed to be like 2 a.m. I'm going to go 8 p.m. And then it says tacos will be ready at 8 p.m. So you see how it's using what I have right here to run the function. So it says tacos will be ready at 8 p.m. Now only, so you could automate your house to like do these things or something, but this is the idea of fourth meal. <laughs> Some Taco Bell right there, classic fourth meal stuff. So um, three in the morning, <laughs> you just change this argument. This is the argument that says what time it'll be ready. Tacos will be ready at 3 a.m. And oh, we could do so much fun with this. We won't, but I could have it like if the time is later than this, all these different things, um, lots of different things we could do. Second dinner, <laughs> classic. So this, these are the arguments. They are the instructions for the function. Purple meerkat and green koala. 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 It's purple versus green. What is that? Is that the colors of Lex Luthor had a thing that was purple and green? What else is purple and green? It's like an interesting combo. It's a very juxtaposed colors but you know what's even crazier than purple and green the next question which is what does the following code produce now this is a logical check this is going to see is two logically equal to two is two logically equal to three is two logically equal to four is two logically equal to five and you just heard me say the answer if you answered the question so it's um but we're doing a logical check right here it's just practice, Natasha, it's just practice. So you just, we always read our code as a sentence. Is two equal to, like, is it logically equal to two? Can anyone answer that question for me? Is two equals to two? Oh, thank you, HD. Is two logically equal to two? And that's the first part of this code. Is two logically equal to two? The answer to that would be what? Yes, true. And then is two logically equal to three? So it's like, is it actually equal to a nice job with the capital true? Cause that's how R sees them. So you see it's seeing if each one of these elements, so we could grab this code right here and test it. Let's go over here just to practice our skill set. And who knows what this code right here, who knows what this code will produce? And you can also write trues and falses as capital T, lower capital F. What will this code produce? And I'd love it if like a non 320 student said it. Nice job, Alishan right there. Alishan, are you 201? Because I know you you won the other one, or you and so we see it right there. Because the first student who answered was a two one student. Amazing work! Oh man, that's just like I'm just like I love it. That but I'm like oh. I got back. No, great job, Alishad. I felt so, I was so elated. No, but that's awesome. Just to show, um, it really helps to have some experience in this. Uh, no, I'm really proud of you. Like, it, it's just so funny. It was the, like the twist. I was like, whoa. Okay, no, it's, it really helps to have experience with this. Uh, running the code right there. No, really great job. Hopefully everyone's having a great time. But keep up the great work. Um, no, you're, I hope you know. I'm just messing around. I'm really proud of you. Let's let's throw some 20 points in the chat for some some good fun. 
and I'm really proud of my students. Like, I am happy that 201 students are hanging out here. Hey, Adam, so good to see you here. We got former students, we got current students. So Alishan just got everyone 20 points right there for some fun. Um, but with this, so we know what this code's doing. It's doing a logical check. And let's see, do you code in C++? If you do, amazing work because, woohoo, C++ scares me. Uh, great, Alexander, I'm so glad to hear that. And we'll be doing um, 320, 474, 475 this summer. I'm gonna be talking about that more, especially for 201 at the end. But if you wanna take 320, 474, 475, we'll be teaching them all this summer, all online, all via the format I do. We got Green Koal in the lead right here. We got Purple Meerkat, having lots of fun. Who's gonna win? Alishan, I'm hoping, I wanna see you win. Which of the following are they used for the functions and we put arguments inside of them? Which of the following is used for functions and we put arguments inside of them? You've seen this a lot throughout today. Like if you've been watching, I'm not gonna give this one away, but which of the following is used for arguments or that we put the arguments inside for functions? Whoa! I would, I'm not joking. You're probably better coded than I am because you probably started younger and you know more languages. Alishan, keep up the amazing work. That is quite the resume on coding languages. Um, yeah, you've got, you've, that's, keep it up. Great work. Just started last year. Well, keep it up. Alishan, I want you to, um, you know, as we see that it's parentheses right here, we've seen this with a lot of the functions today. Um, you did C++ too, nice job. Um, like, what what is your advice, Alishan? Give, give them some advice for students who are just coding right now. Because a lot of, who here has just started coding? Because I want Alishan to maybe like, student to student advice for someone who just started last year and is and is throwing down some great answers today technically you can flex that you're more it's really so we got lucy and roderick and dylan everyone just starting right here so hardest to start with oh for like c plus plus yeah c plus plus is sorry c plus plus users probably less user friendly and sarah did some matlab with engineering and html stuff if you can handle c plus plus you can handle it all yeah and i i can't handle c plus plus i mean okay i've never tried c plus plus but i just I hear the horror stories. I hear how hard it is. And I'm like, yeah, I like, I like R. Jar isn't, Java is not as user-friendly either, either. So yeah, Java, Java has hurt a bit harder. Um, we're actually gonna probably have someone on who codes in Java. My friend Dan Richfield is gonna come by. I might try to have him come by next Friday. And maybe we'll do some, um, maybe we'll do an Among Us after this if people want. Maybe I'll do Among Us like in an hour or two because I'll send out an announcement like, hey, we're gonna do Among Us. We'll see who wants to play if we can get a game going. So let's continue on right here. Who's in the lead? Green Koala, no, Purple Meerkat. Oh, Purple Meerkat's awesome. Soaring Impala. Let's see, the Impala versus the Lemur. Who's gonna win with question number six? Which of the following is how we find E? Now, here's a hint. This eliminates two questions. Kind of gives away then. Uh, R does not have E saved in it. R does not have E saved in it. E is not a function. E is not a value that's reserved in R. E is not a reserved value. So we have a way of finding it and getting it without having to type it out. That gives away the answer. Gold Bunny. Gold Bunny hop into the lead. Morty misses Gold Bunny. So, so E is not reserved in R for anything and E is not a function. The answer is EXP1. Ooh, so many people. So, and this is in the notes right here. Um, but in R, so don't worry, a lot of people lost that one. So you could miss that and still win, don't worry. Uh, that is reserved for E right there. So E, it's E to the power. So if you were to do 2.718, 1828, 1828489045235253, I think that's it. And if you were to do three right here, and if you were to raise this to three, you get the same number. So that is E right there, E is EXP, and then the power you're raising it to is this argument. So whatever you put right here, if you put it to 10, and hopefully I did this to the right decimals, you will also then get the same number there. Java can be rough. So if you put, it's E cubed, exactly Lucy, that's how E works right there, does that make sense? So you can also do log, just review how to do logs. You take the log of let's say 100 base 10, who knows what this will be? What is the log of 100 base 10? And you see it shows you the arguments. The first argument is 100, and then the second argument is what are you taking the base of? So it, it gives you a little bit helpful hint right there. It'll be two, because uh, 100, the base 10 of 100 is two. You have to raise 10 to the second power. So kind of look at this format right here. Um, what is this? The log of 64 base four. 
So if you reverse this, it's, I don't want to say it. I want people to figure it out for a moment and then I'll read it because logs are so weird to work with. It's the log of 64 of for base four, log base four of 64, three, because you'd have to raise four to the third power to get 64. We're using numbers that work like uh, I think 256 is the next, just, you know, classic uh, squares and everything or prime, or whatever, <laughs> not primes. <laughs> I, I've, I've met someone, Landon Kurt Knoll, who's actually like a mathematician who maybe I could get him to come and speak to the class. That'd be really cool if you were to talk about mathematics. And he, he's more of a math person, though. We're, we're business analytics. Another all math, another all math. I, I, during an office hours, I, I didn't want someone to think I was talking ill of math. It's just math is very different from statistics. A lot of people in my class freak out. They're like, Brian, I'm not good at math. And I'm like, don't worry. We're doing business analytics. We use math as a tool. It's like we take math and just we just we use the power of mathematics we don't have to worry about solving equations we have to worry about using like programs and code to solve languages we interpret it exactly that's the big thing is um we do fun math yeah to me and that's just a, i want everyone to know my brother's a pharmacist i'd never want to be a pharmacist we give it context we give it context i'd never want to be a pharmacist i obviously there's nothing wrong with being a pharmacist but what my brother does is something i wouldn't want to do and I don't know if you'd want to be a business analytics person. I mean, we just have our, we have our passions for what we do. So be passionate about what you do. There's things that we like and there's things that we don't like, but you know what I like? I like the next question. Let's do it. Question number seven right here. How do we create vectors inside of R? Your sister's studying pharmacy. Nice. Yeah. If you like pharmacy, do it, do it. And how do we create vectors? Hint, the capitalization matters. Whether something is capitalized or not capitalized matters in R. It kind of narrows it down to two. I don't think there's a vector function. That narrows it down to three. Should be pretty obvious which one it is by now. We do this a lot. It was in the code today. This is something you should know instantaneously. If we're creating a vector, we put it inside of C. Oh no. Oh no. Bones oh, I had it straight on my voice. Um, don't worry if you got it wrong. But you can see me creating a vector right here. This is a vector of numbers. Um, so when we create vectors, we often use C right here. That little, what does that code stand for? Don't worry if you got it wrong, but what does that code stand for? What is it? What does this technically mean? Here we can cheat. It should show up, right? There we go. Combined. Wait, I thought it was concatenate. It's actually combined. I've been saying it wrong this whole time. Really? Well, I'll be, wait. Yeah, it's, it's concatenate, but it's combined. I'll just call it combined from now. That's a lot easier. So errors. <laughs> There's a Joe star in chat. Well, welcome here, Joe star. So we see right here that this is, I think the errors are still counting, right? Lucy, Mubot, count my errors. So um, combined, concatenate, all this stuff right here. Oh, I think it's errors. I think it's errors, Lucy. There we go. Alishan got it. That's the command right there. It's errors. So <laughs> as many errors as you want. So I was like, Mubot should be counting that. The leaderboard's about to go crazy. Ooh, Soaring Impala versus Purple Meerkat. Meerkat. Let's do this. Here we go. How do we get a subset? This is a tough one. So a subset, here's the hint. A subset has two arguments. That narrows it down here. Look at it. A subset has two arguments. The first argument is what are we taking a subset of? And then the next one is all the rules we're going to give for subsetting. So that gives it away. Listen carefully to the hints. A subset has two arguments, two main arguments. There's more you can use, but basically the two ones we use all the time are going to be what are you subsetting? And then the conditions you are subsetting it on. I'll show an example here in a moment. But this should help with you understanding that the subset is a function. Inside the functions go the arguments, argument one right here, what are you subsetting? And two, what are you subsetting on? We'll see this here in just a second. The answer is this one. I didn't have much else to say during this one minute. So I'm like, well, here's the answer. So let's take, <laughs> let's take a look at the answer right here. Function parameters are usually listed in order of importance. Nice job, Alishan, right there. That's usually what R will do when you have a function is list the order of importance. Great job dropping some hints right there. Keep helping out because we need these hints. Uh, if you go to subset right here, you can see, and there's probably more, it just has X. 
So you can also put a question mark in front of this and see how to subset and it'll show you all the different things right here. So watch this. Let's go here to library reg class. If you don't have library reg class, you need to install reg class. We'll be doing this shortly, but this is only if you don't have reg class, but watch this. We're going to load up a data frame and this loads data. And I'm going to go here and go subset. And I'm going to subset if I could type the survey 10, if I could type, and what will this do? What did this just do right here? Can anyone explain what this code I've written? I'll put it all in one line. What does this code right here do? What does this code right here do? Any ideas what this code does? Brian just did a subset of what? So I went to survey 10, that's what I'm subsetting. And then I put a condition that gender equals male. Made a subset of males, exactly. And I could store this right here and watch the global environment. I go right here and write males, and then I didn't run it. Oh, can't type. And now you see the males right there. There are 313 males and they're in their own subset because I took the output from this and I stored it into this very this value, which became a subset. Who does everyone <laughs> all the errors today? Does everyone understand what's going on right here? Like, can people follow what this code says? Like, take a subset of survey 10 of only the genders that are logically equal to males. So Lucy, or is it Lucy or Roger, you are correct. This is a logical condition, and then it's only going to return the ones that are true. So in the condition, only the things that are true get returned. So it went to the gen, it went to gender and said, if they're male, I will return this in the subset. And then I stored the output of it into here. If you just run it without storing it, it'll just print to the screen. And if you store it, it'll go there. So only males are returned exactly. Exactly. You could do not males. So you could go around this and you could do not equal. So here's the not males. Does everyone notice how the number changed right here? And we could say uh, not male. Um, so now it's the not male subset and our male subset. We'll go back in time and there's the male subset and then we'll go forward in time. I need to copy one of these before I do that. So there's the male subset and then we go forward in time and we get the not male subset. So there's both codes right there on the screen, the male subset, the not male subset. Um, exactly. If condition is met, it then puts it into the table. Exactly. So understanding how these codes work is very important. And also seeing some logical stuff right here with the not equals two versus the logical equals two. the exclamation mark just flips it and says return not males. So it's really easy if you just don't want something in your subset. Only a few more questions here to go. Two more questions. The leaderboard is tight, but soaring in Paula, we're going to find out who that is. And they've won a lot of points. You can always say who you are and not who you are. I can add them after, but let's see who's going to win here. How do we create a new column in a data frame? I'm going to give some hints here. So we want to store into something. Remember that data frames are connected by dollar signs. That should eliminate one of these. We need to go to a new column in the data frame. And what are we going to do? We're going to store the old variable into that new column. So if you're listening, we are going to go to the new column in the data frame and we are going to store the old variable. Please tell me I got this one right. Please tell me, Brian. Please tell me. Ooh, nice job, everybody. Let's throw another 10 points. Everyone listening in. We only have 10 people playing right now, but that's fine. My neighbors are going to be like, be quiet. It's Friday. I'll be like, I'm teaching. So it's in 10 points, everybody, for excellent answers right there. I think we said 500 for the winner. Tell people, be like, hey, you need to show up to these gahoots. You get some free points. Someone's going to win big points. So we'll find out. So it didn't let me answer. No, I'm so sorry. Sometimes kahoot goes a little bit crazy. But a big learning lesson right here is when you have a data frame, how do you get to the variables? Everyone will be putting in chat right here. When I have this males data frame, how do I get to the variables? So remember the autocomplete. No, Roderick. I'm so sorry, Roderick. I moved up a tier, dollar sign. And what this is right here is these are the actual columns inside of here. Does everyone notice these are the columns? Just like an Excel workbook, just like in Excel, these are the columns. So when you enter the dollar sign, which I know everything's really tiny right now, he'll, he'll be around. You can't have a tiny screen without tiny brand. Look at all those variables. You got gender, weight, height, desire, weight, GPA. Looks like Excel. How do you get to them? Dollar sign. You type the data frame, 
They do dollar sign. There you go. You can't understand me, so I'm going away. Thank you, Tiny Brian. So we see what's going on right here. The big note to take that you should know immediately is that we have a dollar sign is going to reach inside of a data frame and you can also see it up here in the corner. So people helping each other out. Congratulations, Sarah, doing an amazing job in this Kahoot. Let's find out. <laughs> Purple Meerkat, jumping into the lead. Hang on to that lead. Top five are gonna get points. Stay and hang out and tell me if you got some points. Here we go with the final question. Let's do this. What does the following code produce? This is a tough one. Okay, be slow, be careful. This is red, is two contained in the vector two, three, four, five. That is how that code is read. So this is a logical operator that is read contained in. I mean, it's percent in percent is what it is, but it's definitely not to one. <laughs> We're definitely not in 201 anymore, Toto. So is two contained in the vector here? There's one right answer, and then there's a technical answer. We ain't in Kansas anymore. Oh, the scary music. Is two contained in the vector two, three, four, five? 201, I want you to answer that, true or false. Is two contained in the vector two, three, four, five? Is it? It does sound like Mario music. The answer is true. The answer is true. So when you look at this, and we'll run the code right here to see it, two is contained in the vector two, three, four, go away, males. Two is contained in the vector two, three, four, five. What if I ask this right here? Is 10 contained in the vector two, three, four, five? Is 10 contained in the vector two, three, four, five? Is 10, this would be false right here. Now, here's something interesting. <clears throat> I will change it this way. What if I ask, what if I ask this right here? Who knows what this will produce? What will this produce? This will ask, is two contained in the vector two, three, four, five? Is 10 contained in the vector two, three, four, five? So this is the way this is read. It'll do it, oh, no worries. Is two contained in the vector 10, three, four, five? Is 10 contained in the vector two, three, four, five? And then we're gonna do one last thing right here. We'll look at the leaderboard. So what would that return right there? What would that return? True, false. So two is contained in the vector two, three, four, five. 10 is not contained in. Always read this contained in. Now here's interesting, you ready for this? What will this produce? Is two logically equal to two? Is 10 logically equal to three? Is two logically equal to four? Is 10 logically equal to five? It'll go through the length of the right when you do this. So what will this do? You got this, Nico, you got this. So this checks each of these. Is two contained over here? Is 10 contained over here? And for this one down here, this will return. What will this return down here when I run this code down here? Nice job right there, Dylan. Dylan is right. Dylan just earned everyone another 10 points. Dylan is correct. Let me get another 10 points for everybody. This is our end of points, Kahoot. Thank you for staying if you did this whole time. Earn a lot of points. But this is going to check to see is two logically equal to two is 10 logically to three. We could change this and you'll see that becomes true right there is two logically to four. So I'm gonna change that. That becomes true. And it checks the last element. It does it pairwise. Um, so great job. Yeah, Alexander, great to have you here. Hopefully you had some fun, but you know who had the most fun in order of most fun right here. The most fun was had by Magic Lark. Magic Lark getting 250 points or what it sure. Why not? Soaring Impala getting 500, whatever. We'll go crazy points. And we have your purple meerkat. Can we get points to six? Let's give another 10 points everybody in the chat for six. Alishan, amazing work. Nine out of the 10. Let me add the points to Alishan right here. So Robin Hood took my stonks. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Let me put up the class over screen here while I enter in points. So let's go ahead and add in those points. Remember, tell me what place you got if you were in the top places. I'm gonna head over to the point screen. So just one second while I go to the points. Alishan, amazing work. Humongous points today. Great work, keep it up. So glad to have you at these cahoots. You're always welcome to show up. We like giving out as many points as we can. Got fifth, Daria, let's give 100 points for fifth. Daria, thank you so much for being here. We're gonna even add in new tiers because I wanna reward the people. We got Daria, Alexander. Did you get fourth, Alexander? Nice to Alexander. 
L320, show up. Alexander, great work. Another 100 points right there. Do we get, do we get first? Do we get second? We got first. Do we get second and third? Do we get second and third? Second and third. Magic Lark. Lucy, which, which place did you get, Lucy? Lucy, which place did you get? Lucy got your third. You get 250, Lucy. I'm just going to round you up. I'm going to round you up to this right here. There you go. I, I give you an extra five. Who got second? Who got second? And great job, Alexander. Great job. Second HDT. Nice. Second right here. 500 points. Love it. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Who knows? We might hop on. We might do some more Among Us. What are people thinking? Any last questions? So here's my advice. If you're here, you're probably following along. One, start the visualization now. Congratulations, everyone. Let's put on some music. Let's go to space. Let's put on some music. So let me class over screen off. Let's go over to space. Let's put on some music. Where is it? No. So there's one, there's some of them I like. So welcome HDT, HDT. So advice for data camp this weekend, message me if you have any issues, please immediately. I gotta work on that light over there. Um, please message me whenever you're stuck. Just if you're stuck, send a message and be like, Hey Brian, I don't know how to do this one. Post it in the discord, message in the discord post. You can post it on the 320 channel and we'll kind of talk things out. Like there's, there's hints you can take on data camp. So we're here to help. Um, coding. So Alishan, if you're still here, how much do you have to practice coding? And we're not trying to make people coding experts. We're not trying to make you the best coder in the world, but you don't sit down one day and just know how to code. It's a process and you're beginning that process now. So don't worry if you hit the hint button. So try coding at least one time a week. That's what, that's why I said, I, I've told people via email, uh, maybe four hours a week. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's just make sample projects. Exactly. You just, you do small things, you practice the things you're trying to do. And when you get stuck, ask for help. How many times, oh, we have a saying, our saying is little bits. code in little bits right there. Little bits. That's what we do with code in little bits. Um, when you get stuck, how long can you look at? That's learning in general. You're totally right. You don't try to learn something in a day. And when you get stuck, what do you do? What do you do when you get stuck? You ask for help. Please ask for help. Alishan, is, you're gonna, I bet you and me, you'll know what we're talking about here. Have you ever looked at code and stuck on code for like an hour or two hours? Have you ever looked at code and just been like, it's not working. And then there's the error is so small. It's like a comma or it's a parentheses or it's a space, especially if it's Python. It's gonna be like a space. Like you didn't indent a line properly. Five hours, it was a one character change. One character. Everyone has these coding stories. If you've coded, you know what's so funny? I brought something to Petrie, Dr. Petrie, I call him Petrie, and he fixed something in seconds. R Roderick knows what we're talking about. That was me on my MATLAB final. We're here to help though. When you get stuck, please email us. Please say, this is not working. What's going on? Um, and we'll figure it out. I've been coding for a while now. Like I said, Dr. Petrie said I'm at, at the upper tier. I know, review your code. It's it's just practice. You're not going to learn how to play Rondo a la Turca in a day. Have, yeah, they can fix code that you just, it's a fresh eyes on it. So don't, we'll play one more song after this, but please don't try to code like at the last moment. It's just practice. No one learned how to play instruments by learning how to play instruments at 11 p.m. at night. I mean, yes, I've been coding at 11 p.m. at night. <laughs> Version control. Oh, yeah. Alishan's got some great tips. Great tips. We'll play this one. I want to learn it's just like learning a new foreign language. Exactly. You're welcome, Lucy. I'll head off here after this song. I've got a new outro screen. I'm trying something new. Yeah, you can stay up all night and your brain sometimes just get, gets fried and you're like, you're like, I don't know. I'm just stuck. I'm stuck. But if that's you, if you get stuck, reach out. And the best way to do well is to reach out early. Reach out early, start early. And then when you get stuck, just say, I don't know what's going on. And then someone looks at it and they say, here's your problem. You say, oh, I see it. I see it. Coding does make the world go round. So good to have you, Alexander. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is not a last minute cram class. It's just, 
And I will say this. For those who are freaking out and be like, I have to put so much time into this class. For the 320 students who have taken this class, they'll tell you at the end of the semester, if you've been following along, it's pretty easy. It, it's, 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 it's counterintuitive, but this class can get really easy. Just do it in little bits. Little bits. Because by the end, some people are like, I'm not even studying anymore, Brian. I just come to class, I write down the notes, but you can't say I'm gonna learn how to code at the last moment. And you know what's funny? A lot of people are less afraid of the coding by the end of the class. They're like, oh, the coding is not the hard part. It's the concepts that they're afraid of. Good to have you here, Diana. So this is our last song of the day. And I've got a new way of doing the outro screen. You guys will have to tell me what you think of this. But check this out. Since we like the music so much, if this class was boring, then I would struggle. Hopefully you're not struggling. Hopefully it's not boring. I did a new thing. I did a thing, everybody. With the music, we can now go to the outro screen and listen to some nice music. But as I always like to say, you're having fun. I love it. Thank you, Lucy and HDT. As we always say, bye for now. Bye for now, everyone.